It is so wonderful for your mother to see so many beautiful Sahajogis assembled together on this day of Sahasrar. I think the first era of Sahaja Yoga has ended now and new has started. In the first era of Sahaja Yoga, the starting point was first the opening of the Sahasrara. And gradually, Not on my oh, and gradually moving towards the completion, I find there are so many who are great sajogis today. It is a very natural process of growth that you have gone through. The first one was, we can say, is just the awakening of the Kundalini and piercing the fontanel bone area. As you see on top of your head, these bandhans, that's how you two have in your head, same way. And you have the chakras, same way, built in on your, in your Sahasrara. So in the first era of Sahaja Yoga, we have awakened the deities in your centers, in the medulla oblongata, and also in the brain. But now the time has come for us to spread it on a horizontal level. And to move it on the horizontal level, we have to understand how to go about it. Like the seven colors of the rainbow, we have got seven colors of the light of this centers or the chakras. And when we start it from the back, from the muladhara, bringing it up to the, this side, agya, then it is placed in a different order, if you see it clearly. I mean to say that in the Sahasrara, because it's a concave replacement, is important to understand that the center of the fontanel bone area corresponds to our heart. So heart is the pivotal point for the second irana. I hope you understand what I mean. So, if you have to place your attention to Sahasrara, first thing you have to do is to pay attention to your heart. In the Sahasrara, the heart chakra and the heart itself, the Atma, coincide. Means the Jagadamba becomes one with the heart. That is the heart. So we see that here the yoga takes place. At this point of time, it is very important to understand that we have to take a bigger step. The whole Sahasrara 
moves. In this way, all these chakras throw their lights. In this way, in a clockwise manner, and this axis is the heart. So the essence of all the religions, of all the prophets, of all the incarnations is compassion and is placed in this chakra of heart. Thus we understand that in the second era, now we have to have compassion. Is the manifestation now of the compassion? If God Almighty had no compassion, He would not have created this great universe. Actually His power or the Adi Shakti is the embodiment of his compassion. And this compassion has brought forth all the evolution to human level and even your emancipation as Sahaja Yogis. And compassion is always completely covered with forgiveness. So you can see the Trinity meets at this point. The Son of God is forgiveness, is the embodiment of forgiveness. So the God Almighty, who is the witness, the Mother, who is the compassion, and the child, who is the forgiveness, all of them meet at heart chakra and the sastra. Now, one must learn how to improve Sahasrara itself. You know the presiding deity of the Sahasrara very well. Now, the place of Sahasrara is in your head as you think it to be, but it's just the center of the whole universe. To develop this, you have to pay attention to your heart chakra in the fontanelle bone area. If you pay attention to the fontanelle bone area, then there you must establish the deity. But this deity has to be first established into the heart. Now you are very lucky people that you have the deity in person with you. The people who got realization before you people, I came on this earth, had to imagine the deities. And in that imagination, they were never perfect. But as they say that at Sahasrara, she is Mahamaya. That is how it is described. So if you also see the person, you may not be knowing fully that person or in the perfect way or a complete way because Mahamaya Shakti is much greater than your imagination. That is why one has to surrender. With your limited uh, imagination or brain, one cannot see the deity. Also it is said, she is Bhakti Gamya. You can know through bhakti, through, deva through deva devotion. So the devotion has to be there, but the devotion has to be a very clean devotion in the sense there should be no malice in the heart. Heart should be clean. Heart, to keep it clean is very difficult. Always human beings have a relative understanding of reality. But reality is absolute. So to achieve that, one has to get rid of all the other kind of impurities that are within the heart. So in the beginning, we try to achieve our realization not with very clean heart. At that time, we had lots of attachments, 
we were identified with false things. And also we thought by getting realization we'll become very powerful people. After realization also we started indulging into petty things. We started asking for favors for our relations, friends, mothers, sisters. And the women thought of their husbands and their brothers, Little children. Us. They all asked for the blessings of all those with, they were, with whom they were entangled. All this entanglement you got over, I know, very soon. Now the job of an avatara is such that he has to fulfill the desires of his bhaktas. The job, job of an avatara uh, is such that he has that to is, he has to fulfill the desire of his bhaktas, his disciples. Yeah. For example, Sri Krishna was asked by gopis that we want you to be with us individually, with every one of us. So he divided himself into many Krishnas, and he was with one every one of them. But that was a very divine desire, I think. That was a very divine desire of the gopis. But when you asked me about your brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, I tried to do that whatever was possible. Also the kshema that you asked for, ashrams you asked for, all the things that you needed was there for your desire to be fulfilled. So at the Krishna's level it was yoga kshema vahamyam. So the kshema was looked after at Krishna's level because it was promised. But what next in the new era that has to come? As you have now good families, good ashrams, good uh, jobs, everyone is happy. Let us think of the next era. Next era is of compassion, as I told you. But any one of the chakras are weak in you still. The light that becomes white because of the seven colors may dim out or may be defective. So all the chakras that are within us are to be looked after. To pay attention to every chakra and Put compassion, the feeling of compassion on these chakras. Now let us take the chakra of Sri Ganesh. You pay attention to Sri Ganesha and establish him through your thought, because now your thought is divine, in the Muladhar chakra with great respect. Here now you have to know that in the first era of Sahaja Yoga I could not have talked of these things to you. This is much subtler doing, subtler work. Now put your feeling on that chakra. Chakra is the Pradesha, is the country and the king is Sri Ganesh. And that's the country. The Le chakra est un pays. Now, when you put your attention onto that chakra, put your feelings towards him, a feeling of love and adoration to him to begin with. And then to manifest compassion, you have to ask nothing but one thing, that, O oh God, of innocence, give innocence to all the people of the world. But first, you have to be innocent to ask that, otherwise uh, it is unauthorized asking, or you can say uh, you have no right to ask. So, to understand 
in a sense, you should try to understand yourself, how your mind is working. When you say, look at anyone, do you feel that you should possess that person? Do you feel unduly attracted or something base feeling comes into your mind? For an innocent person, when he says a beautiful person or a woman or beautiful scene or a beautiful creation, the first thing should happen that he becomes thoughtless, there's no thought. So if there is no thought, there's no question of having any expression of possessiveness or any kind of a baser feeling. But if you pray to Sri Ganesha also, unauthorized a little bit, that please make me innocent so that I'm empowered to ask you for this boon that wherever I go, I become the source of innocence. So that I emit innocence, when people look at me, they feel I am innocent. This is compassion. The compassion to ask Him to give you the power of compassion itself. So that, as you see here, uh, these beautiful uh, centers as if the light starts moving horizontally. starts moving on the sympathetic nervous system. So you become the powerful innocence yourself. You don't become stupid or childish, but you become childlike. The whole behavior is extremely dignified and innocent. Normally, if you find a person who is dignified, is normally is not an innocent person because he puts up a show, it's a deliberation to become serious and show that he's very dignified to impress others. And child doesn't put up the show of innocence, uh, of dignity or anything, because the child is not aware of deliberations. But you develop that rare combination of innocent dignity. Now the other quality of, say, Sri Ganesha starts uh, expressing itself on horizontal level, that you become discreet. But that is a power, I am again saying, the power of discretion you develop. Now one must understand the difference between the power of discretion and discretion itself. So the power means it acts. For example, you may not speak, but if you are standing somewhere, the discretion itself will act in the situation. Like a Sahaja Yogi, supposing, is a good Sahaja Yogi, is going in a train, and the train has an accident. Mostly it will not have, but has. Nobody will die. So you establish the discretion, which is power itself, that acts by itself. You don't have to say that you act, it acts, but you just become the vehicle, a beautiful, clean vehicle of that discretion. Then you should believe, now you are spreading horizontally. In the first era of Sahaja Yoga, you needed to see me in person. You needed to see me in person. As we say in Sanskrit, Adheya is the target. Uh, you wanted the target in front of you. Huh? No, I cannot say target. But there's no word in English. Whatever is to be achieved. Because there's no word in English language. What to do? So now, when you wanted that, 
all the time and you felt happy, secured, uh, joyous when you had that in person before. Then in the second era, now you will not desire so much that mother should be there, you will take it over from me. This is the divine desire I am telling you about and you have to work on that from today onwards. I am with you, you know that, but need not be in this body because I don't know if I exist in this body or not. But once this desire starts working, you will see tremendous miracles happening. When the child is born to a mother, automatically she gets milk. So the nature is so connected with the whole thing, in your divine desire also it is connected. And it is very evident when you are a divine person. So you may find me anywhere, you are walking on the street, suddenly you might find Mataji walking with you. So this is the second era we, are, we have started and you should not be shocked if you see me sitting on your bed and putting my ha hand on your head. <laughs> or you may see me in the form of Christ walking into your room or as Sri Rama. That has to happen. So you should be prepared <laughs> Already so many miracles have taken place on you, but on a grosser level, you have seen the light coming on my head and the photographs have shown some miracles to you. But many things will happen that you will see something that you could never imagine. This has to happen just to convince you that you have reached a certain height of your evolution in the new area of Pragyaluk, because this is a new state into which now you will be entering on a horizontal basis. In this uh, area you will give up asking for gross things and also for anything subtler anything that is subtle. The asking will disappear and that is the time you will become very powerful. Whatever I say happens as you know. Only thing I cannot uh, command you to be evolved. The Kundalini's work in you has been done quite a lot. Now the new work of compassion, of spreading it to others has to be done by you. As the light grows brighter and brighter, the area it covers becomes bigger and bigger. So you become the giver of compassion. In my last lecture, which you have heard already, I have requested you how to do tapa. Uh, we could not hear it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. All right. But with a complete surrendered mind, you have to go through the pilgrimage, say, of this castle. <laughs> this is one of the glimpses of the tapa that you have to do because I am told some of you had to uh, get into little difficulties and you people suffered a little bit on your way for the pilgrimage. But it is fun to be venturesome and to get into places where the devils dare not go. But it is fun. Fun, no word. No word in French. They have never fun. <laughs> Let us see, it is miserable. <laughs> and if you know how to get fun out of 
the so-called discomforts, then you should know you are on the right light. And as you start becoming discreet automatically, you should know you are progressing well. As you become more peaceful and your temper vanishes in the thin air, as soon as you see somebody attacking you, then know that you are progressing well. As soon as you see a ordeal or a calamity falling on the personality and you do not get worried about it, then know that you are progressing. When no amount of artificiality can impress you, then know that you are progressing. No amount of material uh, well-being in others makes you unhappy, no more unhappy, then know that you are progressing well. No amount of labor or, or troubles are sufficient to become a surgeon. Any, whatever you may try, one cannot become a surgeon. While you have got it without any effort, so you are something special. So this, once you understand that you are special, you will become humble about it. Then when it happens to you that you humble down, when you see you have achieved something, that you have some powers, that you are emitting innocence, that you are discreet, and as a result of that you become more compassion, humbler personality, a sweeter personality, then you should believe that you are in the heart of your mother. This is, is the sign of the new Sahajogi now, in the new era, who has to move with new force, where you will grow so fast that Without meditation, you will be in meditation. Without being in my presence, you will be in my presence. Without asking, you will be blessed by your Father. This is what you are in for and again I welcome you to this new era today, on this great day of Sahasrara. May God bless you all. Could you forgive me? Mahapathar Srinivala Devi Ki Jai!